Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai colored Enter the Battlefield deck featuring Yarok the Desecrated as its commander, suggested by my supporters on Patreon. The 5 mana 3 5 elemental has a Death Touch and Life Link, says if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time, so it can double up on any ETB effects on our creatures, but it also works well with landfall effects as we'll see. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, I've split it up into a few different categories, starting with the mana acceleration, which is very important when playing Yarok, since it's pretty expensive to play the commander in the first place, and sometimes we want to wait until we can play Yarok and another creature in the same turn to get immediate value, and for that to work we need access to a ton of mana. So at one mana there's both Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves. Kind of tricky to play these on turn 1, since we're playing a 3-color deck, but I've made sure to include plenty of untapped green sources, so we can still make that happen. Then at 2 mana there's Explore and Grow Spiral to draw a card, put an extra land in play. Into the north can find an extra snow land, which is why we have all the snow-covered basics in the mana base. Gala Greeters doesn't ramp right away, but once we start playing extra creatures we can choose between making a treasure, gaining 2 life or putting a counter on it, and once we play Yarok we can choose 2 modes at once, so we'll often be able to get all 3 modes every turn. Then Lotus Cobra can make a mana with Landfall, so it can also be doubled with Yarok out. Innkeeper will gain life when creatures enter, and makes a treasure when it enters, and then we've got the two mana ramp artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone, which we'll see in most of these Brawl decks. Then at three mana we've got even more ramp, with Cultivate, finding two basics, putting one in play. We've got the Rejuvenator, which when it enters can look at the top five and find a land to put on the battlefield. The Lenor Visionary draws when it enters and taps for green. Spring Bloom Druid will sacrifice a land to find two more basics to put on the battlefield tapped. Got the Tireless Provisioner, which also has a landfall, making either a treasure token or a food token, so it can also help us ramp by making treasure. We've got the Topiary Stomper, finding a basic when it enters, can attack and block as a 4 4 Vigilance as soon as we have 7 or more lands in play. And then Uro can be played early to put an extra land in play, gain 3 and draw a card, and then later we can escape it out of the graveyard, in which case it's a 6 6 with the same ability when it enters and attacks. Quandrix Cultivator can find a basic island or forest to put on the battlefield untapped. Solemn can find any basic to put on battlefield tapped and when it dies draws a card. And then a Cavalier of Thorns mills a few cards to find a land and put it on the battlefield. Also an elemental and we do have a few elemental synergies throughout the deck. And then if it dies we can also maybe return a card from our graveyard back on the top of our deck. And then Ulvenwald Hydra, another giant creature that will grow with a number of lands in play. And when it enters can also search up a land to put on the battlefield tapped. And then the next category is Interaction, ways to maybe remove opposing creatures and enchantments. We've got the Ether Channeler, which can either make a bird, bounce a creature or draw a card when it enters. Reclamation Stage blows up artifacts and enchantments. Chupacabra just destroys a creature. Hostage Taker can either steal an artifact or an opposing creature, and then we can cast it. If the opponent removes the Hostage Taker before we did so, then they can get their permanent back. Then Binding can destroy any opposing permanent, and on the second chapter will ramp. Not the best synergy with Yarok necessarily, but just a good card to have access to in this deck. Same with Death Sprout can destroy a creature and find a basic to help us ramp. Then at 6 mana we can flash in a Dream Eater to bounce an opposing Nolan permanent back, while also surveilling 4 to set up our next big play. Cemetery Desecrator when it enters or dies can maybe take out an opposing creature while exiling cards from graveyards. Can also deal with Planeswalkers by removing loyalty counters. And then there's the Noxious Gearhulk, similar to the Chupacabra, destroys an opposing creature when it enters and also gains life equal to its toughness. And then Massacre Worm can be a nice one-sided sweeper against smaller creatures from the opponent, giving them minus two, minus two until end of turn. And then as long as the worm's in play, the opponent will lose two life whenever one of their creatures dies. And then Kogla can enter fighting an opposing creature, and when it attacks can take out artifacts and enchantments. Then the Casualties of War, a very versatile answer that can take out an artifact, creature, enchantment, land and planeswalker and we can choose any of these modes, so in the best case scenario it's a nice 5 for 1. And then a Titan of Industry, another nice recent addition, when it enters can gain life, make a Rhino token, maybe blow up an artifact or enchantment, or put a shield counter to protect the Yarok for instance. And then our next category is dedicated to card advantage, starting at 2 mana with Fibblethip, which will draw a card when it enters, same as Elvish Visionary and Wall of Blossoms. 
Got a Fierce Empath at 3 mana, finding a creature with mana value 6 or greater when it enters and put it into our hand so we can find our various win conditions. Tireless Tracker will make a clue token with a landfall. Then Risen Reef has excellent synergy with Yarok as they're both elementals. And then whenever an elemental enters we get to take a look at the top card. If it's a land put it in play, if not put it in hand. So it's still a card advantage and it doesn't matter if we have Risen Reef in play before playing Yarok or play Risen Reef afterwards, we'll still get 2 triggers right away. Then there's a Gonti to play cards from the opponent's deck. Guardian Project will help us draw whenever a creature enters, so that also gets doubled by Yarok. We've got Oracle to play additional lands, including lands of the top of our deck. Oracle of Half-Truths can also reveal a few cards, and then the opponent gets to play a mini-game where they reveal some of the cards, and then we can choose one of the two piles. Always fun to play. Then there's Moldrifter, which we can evoke as another cheap elemental, or we can cast it at 5 mana to draw two cards when it enters. Tatiova, another landfall card, which will draw and gain life. A Burning Rune Demon lets us search up two cards, and the opponent can choose one that we can keep in hand. The other one goes into our graveyard on a 6-6 flyer, and the Demon Lord another 6-6 flyer. This one also has Trample, and when it enters it can draw a few extra cards, especially if we keep revealing expensive cards to it. And then the Great Henge we can typically play for pretty cheap, as we have some high-powered creatures throughout the deck. And then it taps for double green, gains two life, and when a creature enters, it enters with an extra counter, and we get to draw a card. It's also excellent with Yarok. And then we've got the miscellaneous category, which includes the boots to protect Yarok and give our creatures haste. We've got the glass pool mimic, can be played as a land, or we can copy a creature that's already in play. Skewed Swarm is another landfall card that can quickly go wide and make an army of 1-1s. We've got Thassa to flicker our creatures to re-enable ETB effects. We've got Timeless Witness to get a card back from our graveyard, can also be eternalized for 7 mana, in which case it enters as a 4-4 zombie that still gets a card back. Penharmonicon, very similar to Yarok, will also double our ETB effects. And then Emergent Ultimatum, one of the benefits of being in the Sultai Colors, can search up 3 different monocolored cards. The opponent can choose one that goes back and we get to cast the other two for free. And one of those will often be Craterhoof Behemoth, which is kind of our finisher of choice. When it enters, we'll pump our team, giving it plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures we control, as well as Trample, so that will usually end the game on the spot, especially with a Yarok out. And then a mana base includes a lot of basic lands, since we have quite a few effects that let us search up our basics so we don't want to run out. And I'm also playing a lot of fetch lands to potentially double up on landfall effects, which can also search up our basics, so we need to make sure we have enough of those. And then Castle Garenbrick, one of the few utility lands in the deck, as it can maybe give us a mana boost when casting our expensive creatures, especially the green ones. And then just a lot of dual lands for additional mana fixing. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw facing the Blade Reforged, which can be a pretty scary commander. So we need to be off to a quick start. Lotus Cobra can certainly help, so this seems worth keeping. They may remove the Cobra, but then we still have some nice tools. And at turn 1, a Beaumont Courier can start exiling cards to eventually provide some card advantage. Could hang on to Evolving Wilds to maybe enable Landfall twice. I think I'm still better off just getting the tap land out of the way. And we'll get a forest. Bonus got the Steamkin, which will eventually make more mana. For now, play Cobra, and then if our opponent wants to kill the Cobra, at least they won't be able to play their commander for the turn. Stormseeker, okay. Another nice haste creature. But we get to keep our Cobra, which is the important part. So I can play a land and then play a Solemn. If I explore first what happens, then we should still have the mana to play Solemn afterwards. So that's better. Could also go for a Guardian Project, but I think I just want the uh, extra blocker in play. And we can get a second blue source. Okay, that was a good turn. And then I'm not planning to block with Cobra, so might as well attack. And then next turn we could cast Yarok, or we can take a slightly different approach. There's the Blade Reforged, 2-2 two, two Haste. And we'll pick up a counter as soon as it attacks. So, 
Stormseeker pumps itself, means Courier's probably not attacking. Finds a land. Don't think we're blocking. So we're already down to eight. At least Yarok has lifelink. So that helps. Okay, so sequencing. If I play castle, I can make an extra mana. Activate castle. So that's six green mana. And then I could still have blue and black left over. So that's eight total. So I could play Yarok and Empath trigger twice. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. And then we just need to survive this next turn, and then we should be able to take over with whatever we search up. And uh, don't know if we can quite end the game with Crater Hoof Behemoth, especially if our opponent takes out a few of our creatures. But a Titan of Industry can gain life, and so can a Noxious Gearhulk, so those are both excellent. Opponent's creature is a little bit too large for Massacre Worm. So yeah, we'll hang back. Happy to chum block with pretty much everyone. As long as we can keep Yarok out of danger. Opponent pumps Courier. And goes all out. So if Yarok blocks Courier, they could have a 3 damage effect to finish it off. So maybe we block like so. And then they wouldn't be able to use Steamkin for mana unless they want to sacrifice it since it's going to have two damage applied. We only take two. And hopefully they can deal six points of burn. I think that's safer than putting Yarok in harm's way. And then next turn either Gearhulk or Titan should stabilize us. Volokut Exploration's fine. Glorybringer is scary. They could technically cast it if they give up on Steamkin. But they're going for a light of the stage, finding Facebreaker land. So Noxious Gearhulk, probably gonna be the move here. Steamkin dies. We're down to five, but we should be Stabilizing nicely with a Gear Hulk. And then probably take out the Storm Seeker over Face Breaker, although it's a close call. Play a Tap Land. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, just needed one turn with the Arok to really take over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Eternal Schemer, so an enchantment deck. Well, casualties deals with enchantments, problem with this hand is the lack of green mana and accelerations also missing. So I think I have to mulligan. This has more potential. And then... This will still enter tapped on turn 2, unless we get a forest. So maybe I do get a forest, but then I'm... Not close to casting Hostage Taker. I think I still get a forest so I can play turn 2 Visionary. And hopefully draw into some lands. Could also explore, I guess. Right, Island is good. So still happy to explore. Could also draw into one mana elf and still play it. Now Uro ramps a little bit more. Okay, so just need to keep hitting our land drops. And then we should be good to go. Hostage Taker deals with artifacts, so it doesn't deal with enchantments. So time for Uro. And Fabled Passage is excellent. So that gets her black sorted. Well, 
Also puts an extra card in graveyard to make it easier to escape. And a black market connections. That one's very good too. Especially when we're not applying any meaningful pressure. Okay, aligned is still good. So I could play Yarok, although the chances of it sticking around are pretty low. So I think we start with Visionary and then Innkeeper, even though we miss out on one life. I might draw into something more useful, like a Reclamation Sage to deal with the uh, enchantment. Spiral's good too. And I can main phase it in case I can still play Innkeeper afterwards. So we're on 5 mana, 6 for green creatures. So we're slowly getting to our 7 mana for ultimatum, which will be the big turning point. Opponent makes a treasure, so they're preserving their life total. Hostage taker can just get rid of the treasure token if we don't find a better use for it. And Heliots, okay. And no land, unfortunately. So, yeah, I can play Innkeeper and then save my treasure to hopefully draw land and ultimatum next turn. A land also helps me cast Titan of Industry thanks to the castle. So that's not a bad plan B here. Blow up an enchantment. Maybe make a rhino. And then what to get with ultimatum is a good question. We drew the Titan, so that's not an option anymore. But we could still get some card draw effects. And there's going to be a few other ways of dealing with enchantments as well. Shark Typhoon Hardcast, okay. Put on means business. So I guess Titan Hardcast is the solution here. Take out Shark Typhoon. And then... Probably just make a Rhino. Could go for Shield Counter. Although a lot of their removal probably exiles. But maybe that's still better. Play a Triome, hit for two. Connections just making treasure for now. And yep, Bounding Gold shuts down the Titan, although doesn't remove it from the battlefield, so we can still maybe destroy the enchantment later. Companion to draw. Okay, so land of the top likely casts ultimatum. Casualties of war, also very good. So this only gives their creatures hexproof, so connections are still good to go. Or we can free our titan. So, close call. Definitely take out Xur. And then maybe freeing titan beats destroying the connections. So we can apply more pressure. Take out their only blue source. And attack. Although now they could remove the shield counter by chumping with companion, but if they do, they're still taking quite a bit of damage. So that's maybe okay. Opponent just takes it, down to 10. And then next turn we could already escape Uro. There's Zur. Can activate. So they can make basically an indestructible creature here. That will also have Death Touch. But we've got the Dream Eater to potentially bounce it. Although now with a land ultimatum might just be the move. And then Craterhoof is going to be one of them. How good is Massacre Worm on this board? Eh, could be better. Kogla should be pretty good. And then... Do we have a clean answer to Heliot turning into a creature? I guess an Aether Channeler. Could go for Thassa to start flickering Titan of Industry. I like that one too.
And then Thassa plus Dream Eater, also quite effective. Alright, we get Thassa and Kogla. So Kogla fights Zur. In response, I'll probably activate Heliod. And then end of turn, Thassa can flicker Titan, and they'll no longer have Hexproof since Zur is gone. And yeah, we can attack, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, yeah, ultimatum's a powerful card. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Urza, Lord Protector, so blue-white control. Our hands, okay. Um, don't know if Boots is going to be at its best. Casualties should be fine. So yeah, I'll keep it. And Druids to give us a bit of a mana boost. Witness, at the very least, gets back a land that we sacrificed. And we can play the Boots, or we can play a Fetch Land now. I'll play the Boots. Can still curve out. If we're planning to play Witness first, I guess there is a chance we want to play Yarok on turn 4. In which case we'll be stuck with a tap land. Opponents ramping with Idol. And yeah. Druid, Sacrifice, Swamp, get... Island uh, Forest is fine. Opponent passes with potential counterspell available. So I'm not gonna go for Yarok just yet. Instead, I can play a fetch land to set up casualties next turn. And Kind of want a Timeless Witness back the casualties if they counter it, so maybe play a Wall of Blossoms and see what else we pick up. Okay, Provisioner. Could be nice. Can play River, play Provisioner, and then next turn Storefront can make two treasures. Opponent draws two with insight. So they're missing white mana at the moment. Makes me less afraid of a board wipe. There it is. And there's a mindstone. Well, this casualties is likely getting countered, but uh we can try again with Timeless Witness getting it back. So how about we attack first, maybe bait out some block from the opponents, like activating Guardian Idol would be lovely for us. Opponent takes it. Alright, let's get this countered. Artifacts and land. Alright, opponent's just drawing a response, so that resolves. Ooh, never mind. Pact of Negation to counter. Well, at least their next turn is tied up. Don't quite have the mana to witness and replay casualties in the same turn. Although, we're actually not too far off. A Fabled Passage would do it. Tatiova's not bad either. Alright, opponent foretold a card. Could be a Doomscar, could be all sorts of things. So do we just ignore our Timeless Witness for the time being and go for Tatiova, or do we play Yarok, get extra treasure from Provisioner? And I can give Yarok Hexproof, but it's not going to be helpful against the Sweeper. So maybe Tatiova play a land. Still feels kind of weak in the face of a board wipe. If I Timeless Witness play a land, make a treasure, I'll have five mana left. So one shy of casualties. So yeah, maybe Yarok makes some treasure to build up our mana is still better. And then I could, I guess, witness twice, getting back casualties and a fetch line, for instance. Do 
Do we still want to fetch land if our opponent casts a board wipe? Probably doesn't hurt since we have a Tatiova. Alright, and then do I equip the boots? I don't think I bother. Save the treasure. Cloud Blazer to draw to, two mana left. Okay, that's not too bad. So unlikely to see a Doom Scar afterwards. And a Skyclave does not exile Yarok. Exiles Witness. Alright, so we've got a ton of options now. Tatiova plays Torfront, being one of them. Could fire off Casualties of War, although it doesn't seem super necessary. So I'd rather draw a bunch of cards here. Make more treasure. Cultivator triggers Tatiova again, and there's a Great Henge we could also run out, although I don't think we'll be able to play Cultivator afterwards. So let's Cultivator first. Make more treasure, draw more cards. It's the Yarok way. Awesome. Skewed Swarm also quite nice here, although we're out of land drops. So is it time for Great Henge? Play Elvish Mystic afterwards. That seems decent. Can even play our Oracle afterwards too. So we'll start by tapping this, playing Elvish Mystic. Draw some more cards. And uh yeah, another elf seems fine. Mentally preparing for a board wipe here. Hopefully it's not a farewell to exile everything. Move to combats. This can attack, and that's it. Put on chumps, so yeah. The fact that they're chumping heavily implies a sweeper, so maybe I shouldn't even have bothered attacking. Okay. And anything else? Maybe we want to play Fibblethup while Yarok is still in play with Henge out. Yeah, I could see that. Fierce Empath is nice. Now we will have to discard to hand size a bunch, but there's a few lands we don't mind getting rid of. Then Solemn's probably no longer needed. And what else here? Alright, I guess our opponent has seen enough too much value from Yarok. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Wandering Emperor, so it could be a more controlling deck. Well, we wouldn't have to necessarily tap our creatures. So this seems like a keeper. I've got Cobra and Explorer. Just need to hit a few land drops. Might be better off playing an Idol on two. This can be green. So hoping for land of the top, and then we can play Cobra, play Explore, and maybe some stuff afterwards. Spring Bloom and Druid. Well, the land's coming to play tapped, so we'll be able to cast something afterwards. So at that point, maybe better off just playing Uro, since I'll need to draw lands eventually. Druid would be better to combine with Cobra if we get the chance. Find a Risen Reef, so not quite what we were hoping for. Maze Mind Tomb, so yeah, definitely looks like a more controlling build. There we go, Hideout, so now Cobra can make two extra mana. And then I'll still be able to play Druids, make two more mana, and play Explore. That looks good. Get a blue source.
opponent activates Celestial Vault to find a card from its spellbook to put in exile and eventually put in hand. So get Island and probably Swamp. And then Cobra needs to make a green mana. And then we can explore. And found a mana confluence. Although we're at the end of the turn here. Still pretty good. From missing a land drop to making some extra mana. Fairgrounds Warden exiles Cobra. I'll accept. Okay, so we want to try and get to a point where we can play Yarok and Risen Reef in the same turn, ideally. So we're not quite there yet. But we can play Hostage Taker and then play the opponent's Tome right away. That seems decent. And then... Tome can maybe help us draw into an extra land for next turn to set up that play. And I guess I'll save myself one damage. Okay. Pass it back. And I'll put an upkeep stop in case we want to scry with Tome once again. So Yarok plus Risen Reef, hopefully coming up. And I'll scry to hit my land drop. There it is, so no need to scry an upkeep now. So Risen Reef first or Yarok first doesn't really matter, and in case they have instant speed removal, probably better to Risen Reef first. So this way we're guaranteed the Risen Reef trigger if they want to kill Yarok. Humiliation removes its ability. So that's pretty annoying, but at least we got our value from Risen Reef. So even flickering Yarok is not going to help, but once it goes back to the command zone, it will reset. Okay. Commando can blow up Tomb. But they might hang on to it. Ideally, they use Commando before we play Great Henge. Farmhand gets an extra land. Can maybe use Titan to blow up the vaults, but they can always sacrifice it in response. Okay, Rosad exiles one of our creatures, goes for Risen Reef. Well, we can just cast our ultimatum next turn. Let's see, five, six, seven. Yeah, we have triple green, double blue, double black. So I don't even know if we need to scry with Tome. I guess I wouldn't mind hitting my land drop. There it is. Okay, so Massacre Worm looks pretty good on this board. So we can pay for potential mana tithe. And then what to search up? Massacre Worm looks pretty good on this board. We could get Kogla to eventually also destroy the opponent's uh, artifacts and enchantments, Crater Hoof. Don't know if that quite wins the game here with the Yarok shut down. So we have options. I'm liking Massacre Worm. I'm liking Kogla. And maybe a Burning Rune Demon for additional card draw. Maybe should have played land first if they decide to give us the Massacre Worm and then Commander would blow up the uh, Tome and we could have at least drawn a card first, but yeah. Ultimatum's just too much for them to handle and they explode. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Paranoid Partisan, so presumably an artifact deck. And a Hostage Taker, a clean answer to artifacts. There's Emergent Ultimatum to ramp towards. So yeah, I'll uh, give this a try. Turn 2 we can explore, hopefully hit a few more lands, especially fetch lands would be good with a Provisioner.
Panharmonicon could also be fun. Alright, stun names Sorcery, so not quite what I expected. So, how do we proceed? Maybe Provisioner play Tapped Mimic? Or we can save the Mimic to copy Hostage Taker later? If I exile Stun, they could send it back to the Command Zone, or they could leave it exiled until they remove Hostage Taker, which they could easily do. So, quite a few options. I think I go Provisioner, plus Tapped Mimic, make a Treasure, and maybe set up Yarok next turn. Midnight Clock keeps up one mana, so they could still have a wash away to counter Yarok. If we hostage take the Midnight Clock itself, then I can play it thanks to Evolving Wilds making two treasures, or I guess Pathway will do it too. Alright, I guess hostage taker it is. And then can go for the Pathway. Opponent did not tap it for mana response. So this on green. Make treasure. Play Midnight Clock. And I'll stay back. So next turn I could play Yarok and then play Evolving Wilds, which would give us a ton of extra treasure to follow up. Soaring City to bounce a Midnight Clock, that's fine. So your opponent keeps up the blue mana for a potential counter for Yarok here. Alright, so we'll have to take a different approach. How about Moldrifter or just cast Panharmonicon first? Yeah, Panharmonicon seems decent. And then Moldrifter can draw four cards even without Yarok in play. I'll make my treasure while I can. Could also keep the land uncracked. To maybe next turn play Yarok and get even more treasure, but this seems fine. And then uh, Moldrifter can be evoked. And uh, that's gonna draw us four cards. Risen Reef, excellent too. And yeah, put and bury the in card advantage here. Despite maybe having an answer to Yarok, it doesn't matter. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tonos, the Toymaker, so Birds and Beast Tribal. Our hand could use a bit of acceleration, so I don't think I'm keeping. This is better. Don't expect a ton of removal necessarily where we need the boots, but uh, always nice to have. And we'll get a Swamp. We'll have to take a bit of damage to cast our green spells early on. And with the Cultivator, we have to be mindful of not playing too many Swamps out. Okay, so we can Cultivator, or we can uh, just play Mindstone, play Boots, and then next turn Cultivator, maybe after playing Yarok. Kiora. Pretty nice with an adapted Incubation Druid, for now just untaps the blue source, keeping up two mana. And a Ledger Shredder. Okay, let's go for Yarok. And then I could equip the boots to protect it. Which is probably worth it. As we'll also get to pressure Kiora that way. And then at the very least play a Cultivator next turn, get two basic lands untapped, play Idle afterwards, and then set up for Demon Lord to hopefully refresh our hand. So we could see their commander show up. It's gonna be a Questing Beast instead, okay. Draws with Cura. Take five. 
Unless there's an octopus mutated. Your opponent gets to draw from the Luncher Shredder hitting us now. Ooh, Crater Hoof Behemoth is what we're working towards. So, Cultivator will help us get there. And I think I just get another green source so we don't have to keep taking damage off Lenore Wastes. Ledger Shredder, aka the C Dasher Octopus, gets to connive. But uh, yeah, looking forward to a double Behemoth trigger next turn, especially for opponents tapped out. If not, we can test out the waters with a Demon Lord. And then we could take out Kiora, it's gonna cost me my Yarok, so I don't think it's worth it. So we'll just pass. And we'll take it. So our opponent has access to 6 mana plus a Cura activation. There's Thanos, so still 2 mana untapped. So don't expect my Crater Hoof to resolve if we go for it here. So how about we try Demon Lord, get that countered. Alright, it resolves. Even better. Might have wanted to tap my Mind Stone. Alright, Cultivate, so no land for now, but uh, I've got a nice full grip, and uh, could have put the boots on the Demon Lord, attack Kiora, and then move it back to Yarok, although Demon Lord blocking the Octopus might be better. Opponent names Beast, plays a Bloodline Pretender, so they get to connive and make a copy. Well, hopefully the coast is clear for Crater Hoof now. With five creatures, they'll all get plus ten, plus ten. Or we can keep taking it slow. Hostage Taker also quite good here. Can steal a token, which will be exiled for good. So also a must counter. And then I can still cultivate... Hit my land drop. Sure. And then do we go for a Herald's Horn or maybe Incubation Druids, which I can still play afterwards. Uh -huh, heroic Intervention to save their team, so that's what they were keeping up all along. Fair enough. Well, at least we don't need to worry about counter spells as much. So Crater Hoof definitely would have done it, but uh, hopefully we can still do it next turn. And I'll still keep the Demon Lord back on defense. Trumpeting Gnar mutated, so that also gets copied. They'll make a few beasts, which also grow the Bloodline Pretender. So they are building up a pretty big board now. Not big enough for Crater Hoof, but otherwise we could have been in trouble. And uh, sure, I'll take 10. What's next? Manglehorn to take out some of our artifacts. Okay, can we still cast Crater Hoof 5, 6, 7, 8? Yeah, we should be good to go. Put in going for the boots instead, so maybe they have an answer for Yarok.
Alright, let's find out. Double Crater Hoof. Attack. And our opponent takes it. Alright. So a nice way to end this series. And yeah, Yarog definitely impressed. Can't always rely on the commander itself, but the deck is good enough to still get there without Yarok in play, which is the beauty of all these powerful Sultai colored cards. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.